So in some video games you might like to shoot bullets or projectiles at an enemy, but also it can be very satisfying to uh, use a sword to, to vanquish your enemies like this. Uh, unfortunately, it's actually pretty difficult to do this. Uh, and it's not difficult, it's just a little bit confusing. Um, if you find parts of this confusing, you may actually like to do bullets uh, instead because they are a little bit easier. But if you'd like to stick with uh, a sword battle, for example, uh, just stick with me through the concepts here and maybe with a bit of help in class, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I just want to talk about some basic ideas first. Uh, so if I have, uh, maybe you'll say E for enemy. So if I have an enemy here, uh, and I have a player here, say P for player, and give it some, some legs. <laughs> um, the player and the enemy probably have some sort of collision detection, and if the player hits the enemy, the player is probably going to die. Um, so we we don't want uh, we actually want to have uh, the sword as like this separate position over here. So when you press a certain button, the sword appears or the enemy animation appears. But regardless of whether you draw a new sword or it's just a different animation from the player, the idea is that the game registers that there's a new um, attacking object here. So I'll I'll color it in a little bit with my beautiful mouse drawing. So when you press a particular key, uh, the sword appears for, you know, a split second or as long as you hold the, the keyboard down or whatever it is. Um, but suddenly the game registers that there is a new object here that can kill the enemy. So the enemy's uh, checking its collision with the player to see if the enemy's kick, uh, killing the player and then the uh, enemy is checking its collision with the sword to see if it's being done in by the sword. Okay, so that's just a, a way of thinking about it. The other thing to think about though is which part of the sword is really dangerous. If you have a long handle, you probably don't want it to be the middle of the sword here. That is the point to decide um, that the enemy is being hit. Uh, you probably uh, want it to be more of the up here that is uh, has a little radius um, that the enemy will be checking to see if it gets hit. So that's one thing that makes the code a bit more complicated. Another thing that makes the code a bit more complicated is this all presumes that you're sort of facing this way and walking this way, right? But what if you flip around suddenly and you decide that you want to face this way and then you hit the sword key you don't want the sword to appear out this side now. You want the sword to appear out this side. Um, and that little, and that piece of code to make that work um, can also be a little bit confusing. So all of those aspects together um, make this yeah, a piece of code that can make you feel a little bit like uh, a bad programmer. Don't let it make you feel that way. If you follow the examples, uh, you should be able to get it working. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly go over the code now and um, hopefully that will be of help, even though it will be a bit confusing. Um, first of all, let's go and look at the player sprite. So I suggest that when you're initting your player, so init player, uh, you have the usual things, the X, the Y, the width, the height, etc. Uh, facing. Uh, now, here's where it starts to get interesting. Facing is the direction that you're facing. And this is why we, we want the sword to appear on the right or on the left, depending on which way we're facing. So we need to keep track of which way we're facing. Now, I suggest that you make one be facing to the right and minus one be facing to the left. And we will explain that, uh, how that works a little bit later. It's basically because we're going to flip the screen before drawing it. Um, the second thing I have here is an attack timer um, and the attack timer um, is my way of when I press the space bar, the sword appears for, you know, a split second and then disappears. That's why I have an attack timer. You might have it so that when the sword, uh, the space bar is being held, it attacks, uh, etc. But that's the way I'm doing it. And then here we have the sword X and the sword Y. Um, so we need to keep track of where the sword is um, and we'll make it follow around with the player and based on which way you're facing, etc. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, the main part of the init section.
next, let's look at the code to update the player. And this is where it starts to get a little bit weird, so maybe, so we'll see how we go. So if keyboard.press.space, now the dot .press uh, will only be triggered on the first frame of a press. Uh, so it'll only be triggered once when you press the space bar, not repeatedly. Um, and we're simply going to set the attack timer to 15. Um, and then here, uh, we'll update the attack timer. If it's greater than zero, uh, then we'll say player dot attack, uh, my, sorry, attack timer minus one. So that'll be 15 frames worth of having it above zero. Uh, and then this is the really kind of tricky bit, uh, the sword position. So player dot sword y, uh, equals player dot y uh, minus 10. Uh, that's simply meaning that the sword is slightly lower than the middle of the player. Uh, the y, remember, is up and down. Uh, so then if player dot facing equals one off to the right, uh, then player dot sword x is player dot x plus 30. So the sword appears on the right hand side. Uh, else if the player dot facing equals minus one, then player dot sword equals uh, player dot x minus 30. Uh, you could probably do some clever things with maths there like uh, player dot x, sorry, player dot sword x equals uh, player dot x uh, plus 30 times player dot facing if you want to get super fancy, but I thought this made more sense. So that's what I'm doing it. And finally, we're moving the player, but that's that's not really to do with the update. The next thing is to look at how we draw the sword. Uh, and this is not uh, that obvious as either. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the draw scale uh, to player dot facing one. So the normal draw scale is uh, one, one. Maybe we'll just uh, explain, the best way to explain it is to say that, um, forget about why, that's just normal. You can see this is the normal draw scale, one, one. Um, but if player is facing left, this will be negative one. And if we have X equals negative one, it basically flips the left and right around. So it'll draw the sword out facing the opposite direction. Okay, so that's all that that's doing. Um, then the next thing that we do is we draw the sprite. Um, now that's going to be flipped as well, the knight there. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. And then if player dot attack timer is greater than zero, <clears throat> then we're in the middle of attack and we are going to draw the sword. Um, now this here uh, screen dot set draw anchor to 0 0.5 and uh, zero, and then set it back to normal. You don't have to do that. But what that does is remember we talked about um, if we have the sword out here, <clears throat> if the draw anchor is just normal, uh, then the sword is going to be drawn at the point of uh, where the computer thinks the danger is, which is there. Whereas in reality, we probably want it over here. And if you sort of imagine this as being zero and this as being uh, 0 0.5, um, hopefully that, and this being one up here, uh, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense at least um, as to uh, what's going on there. So you can see we're setting it to 0 0.5. Uh, so we're going to actually draw the sword uh, a little bit off center so that the uh, the bit that's really nasty is where the sword actually is, okay? There are other ways we could do that. Um, and I know that is confusing, but just uh, it, I think it's useful. Uh, the final thing that we're going to do um, is maybe we go into the enemies <clears throat> and look at the update enemies function. And remember the enemies is going to be in a list, just like all of the things we've done. Uh, you go back to the spawning uh, and destroying videos if you're not sure about this, but we're basically going to say for every enemy in the list of enemies, uh, we're going to check for the sword and see if it's been vanquished. Uh, so if the player attack timer is greater than zero, then we'll go through with it. Otherwise, we're just going to not pretend the sword isn't there. Uh, and likewise, we only draw the sword uh, if, if the attack timer is uh, true, I think. Um, uh, and then basically we'll say, uh, if the distance between enemy X, enemy Y, player sword, player sword uh, is less than 15, then enemy active equals false. Uh, hopefully this, this is a little bit more straightforward. That's sort of similar to a bullet, for example. And yes, I'm just going back to check that uh, we are only drawing the sword if it's uh, greater than zero. Uh, 
I'm a little bit worried that uh, maybe I could have done this a lot more simply uh, and maybe this is very confusing but if you're stuck with it, uh, if you stick with it you'll probably get it and if you are stuck I will help you in class.